We're now gonna turn our attention to key suppressing operators that are defined in the flux class from Project Reactor. Suppressing operators create a flux and or a mono, depending on which one you use, that changes or ignores all or portions of its payload. And the particular methods and operators we're gonna look at here are filter, take, and then. We'll start by taking a look at the filter operator. What this does is it evaluates each source value and compares it against a given predicate value. And this predicate value, of course, is passed as a parameter to filter. And this predicate value is going to be an instance of interface predicate, which is another one of those Java 8 functional interfaces that came around when Java moved to functional programming back in the 2014 timeframe. If the predicate test succeeds, then and only then will the value be emitted so it can go up the stream. If the predicate test fails, then the value is ignored and another request is made to get the next element from upstream. The filter method returns a new observable that only contains the values that passed the predicate test. So it's basically filtering, only it allows elements to go through that pass the filter. The number of output elements that come from applying filter could be less than the number of input elements. It could be equal. If every element passes the predicate test, they'll be equal. But if one, one or more of the elements don't pass, then of course you won't have as many elements in the output stream as you did in the input stream. So here's an example that we'll look at more later, which is going to generate a bunch of random big integers. And we'll talk more about how that gets done when we get to the case study. But the part we're focusing on here is it's going to go and emit only odd numbers. We're doing this as part of prime number checking. So there's no point in checking to see whether an even number is prime, because of course it won't be. So in this particular case, we're gonna filter out anything that is an even number and only take numbers that are odd numbers. Note that filter cannot change the type or the value of the elements it processes. It can only decide to let them through or not. So it's somewhat limited in what it can do. That's why it's a suppressing operator. RxJava has a filter operator on its observable class that works exactly the same way. This code is likewise basically taking a bunch of random big integers and only allowing odd values to flow through that stream. Both of these methods, the one for RxJava and the one for Project Reactor are very similar to the filter operation that's defined in Java streams. This one is also same kind of idea. We're gonna go through the value from one to 100 and we're only going to emit odd numbers and then we're gonna collect them into a list. So again, filter is a pretty common concept that appears in many modern Java frameworks for functional and reactive programming. We're now gonna turn our attention to something called take. I had alluded to take earlier when we talked about the interval method and the, the way that you could generate values at some periodic rate uh, starting at zero infinitely. So what we're gonna use here is we're gonna use something called the take operator which only takes the first n values from a flux if there are n values. Of course, if there's less than n values, it'll, it'll return once it reaches the end, once on complete is signaled. This, is, this method, the take method is going to be passed n, and that's the number of items we want to emit from this flux. It returns a flux that's limited to n items. So it cannot be bigger than n. It could be less than n, but it's not gonna be bigger than n. We typically use take in order to limit what are otherwise going to be infinite streams. So here you can see an example we looked at just a few minutes ago, where we use the interval method to go ahead and generate out uh, values starting at zero up to infinity. It'll keep going forever at that period. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to only process S max iteration number of these values before we're going to consider ourselves done. So we'll take a look at that example in more detail here shortly and look at how it works in the, the larger flow of the case study. RxJava has essentially the same basic idea. It's going to have a mechanism where you can use take to limit the number of elements that flow through as well, very much exactly like what we see here with Project Reactor. So RxJava and Project Reactor have the same sort of take method that does the suppression. Both these methods, again, are very similar to a method that's in the Java Streams framework, and that's the limit method. So Project Reactor and RxJava call it take, Java Streams calls it limit, same basic idea. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're only going to emit uh, 100 odd numbers. So you can see that we use uh, 
a generator method called iterate, which will just generate values starting at one to infinity. We're going to filter out everything that is even and get rid of it, only allow odd numbers. And then we're going to limit that particular collection to be only 100. And then we collect that into a, a list. So again, just kind of showing the equivalence between these capabilities in the different frameworks. The third and final suppressing operator we're going to look at in the flux class is the then operator. And this lets the flux complete and then we'll play signals from a provided mono. So that's kind of an unusual capability and you'll scratch your head at first perhaps to see why you could use or why you would ever need to do this. But it turns out to be quite handy in certain situations. The parameter that's passed to then is a mono that will be used to emit from after the then is done. So what this does is it says, ignore the element or elements from this flux and then transforms the completion signal of this flux into the emission and completion signal of the provided mono of type V. And what this does is it creates a returns a new flux that waits for the completion of the source and then emits from the supplied mono. Now, why would you ever want to do this? Well, that's a great question. So here's an example that we'll look at shortly when we get into our case study, where we're going to use this to suppress the output from one stream from a flux and then replace the payload with a different output. So what we're doing here is we're checking if a bunch of numbers are prime. And then when we're all done and we want things to wrap up, we go ahead and use dot then to ignore any other results that come out of the flux stream, which we've already processed and logged and so on, and then display the results and indicate that we're finished. So what we're going to do there is we're going to use mono.from runnable to display the results that we've accumulated asynchronously and then indicate that we're done. So it's a very clever way of kind of combining a couple of different capabilities. Rx Java doesn't really have an equivalent to then. It doesn't have an equivalent for then for monos. It doesn't have an equivalent for then for fluxes. Although you can use Rx Java's completable class in a similar way. And this is created by the ignore elements method that's defined in the observable class. And what that does, and we'll talk about this more when we get to Rx Java, is it returns a completable that ignores the success value of the observable and then signals on complete or on error. This method, the then method, is a little bit similar to Java completable futures then run method, which returns a new completion stage that when the stage completes normally, executes the given action. And this is a somewhat esoteric feature in Java completable futures. It's also admittedly a somewhat esoteric feature in Flux, but we do find a good way, way to use it. And I'll show you that when we walk through the case study here shortly. So that finishes our discussion about suppressing operators in the Flux class that we're going to be focusing on in this course.